Arguably the most iconic cameras in the Fujifilm lineup are those of the X-Pro series. This, the X-Pro2, is the most recent Fujifilm camera I've been able to use extensively, and I must say, I now understand. Over the last five years, I've been able to shoot with a lot of Fujifilm cameras. Either using a friend's or buying them myself, I've shot with the X-E1, the X-T1, the X-E2, the X-T2, the X-E3, which was the first Fujifilm camera I owned, the X-H1, the X100V, and now the X-Pro2. I'll be the first to admit that I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money trying to find the right balance between image quality and handles before settling on a camera within this system. And I'm here to tell you what I've decided for myself in the hopes that it will save you some time and maybe some money. Having used all those cameras and now the X-Pro2 for the last few months, I've come to three definitive conclusions for myself about the Fujifilm system. One, all of the Fujifilm x trans sensor cameras that I've been able to use are phenomenal at producing high quality images and in most cases, really great video. Looking back at the images from the beginning, I honestly had a hard time telling what camera they came out of, so much so that I had to double check the EXIF data to make sure. So that's eight different Fujifilm cameras with four different versions of the x trans sensor. And after adding my favorite custom recipe, I couldn't tell the difference between the images out of the XE1 all the way through the XH1. And that leads me to conclusion number two. I can't let gear acquisition syndrome get the best of me. Because in reality, the only difference between the Fujifilm cameras that I've used is the shooting experience, or what I call handles. Sure, a high megapixel count is great. Focus peaking is great. High dynamic range is great. But they are all but accessories when compared to the actual image making component. Some cameras feel great right out of the box, and some take time to develop a connection with. A connection where you just instinctively know what to do to get the exposure that you want. My favorite photographer is Sam Abel. Sam is, without a doubt, one of the most contemplative and intellectual photographers, and he uses his eye and his heart to compose his images. I can all but guarantee Sam has never used face detection or IBIS. I'm positive he's never used a film simulation. And yet every time I look at Sam's images, I can feel the impact of them. In fact, at one of his lectures, I heard him say that he shoots in P mode because P stands for professional. So if my favorite photographer can do all of this, shooting in program mode, then why am I splitting hairs over the resolution of the EVF or the number of focus points? Three, I should have gotten the camera that I wanted all along. Again, patience is key. I should have saved my money and gotten the one that I wanted instead of the one that I could afford at the time. Because somehow I always end up getting the one that I always wanted, but I just end up paying for it three times over. So that brings me back to the X-Pro2 because this camera is something special. The way that it feels in hand, the balance it strikes between retro and modern, it truly is a photographer's camera. So if you're looking for a camera that takes amazing photos and feels amazing taking them, may I recommend the X-Pro2. As always, thanks for watching, and please follow along on Instagram at wooden.frames.